What's up everybody, it's Ivan with Trout's Fly Fishing back with the forecast for May 15th. We'll get to the important stuff first. First things first, for those of you playing at home, the answer is one and a half chins. I've obviously already started growing the beard back, technically violating the terms of my bet, but uh, you can see the evidence. And if you've watched any of the videos this past week, you can see the evidence of that half chin there. Look, I'll take it. I was expecting two. Uh, a half chin is not that bad, and you know when, as, lo as long as it's not a full two. So, I'll take it. Uh, that's not as important. Probably not the reason you guys tuned in. Uh, let's talk about fishing. So it's mid-May. You're going to get some variable flows, especially on the free stones. You see some higher flows, especially uh, you know on, throughout the system. You know all the systems. So you know tailwaters seeing some bumps, although up in the South Park, not as much actually relatively uh, low for this time, of, well not this time of year, but relatively low in comparison, especially to Deckers. Um, and Freestones, you're seeing some rises, some you know big bumps, and then some you know, sort of flattening out. And you know there's some good fishing to be had there. Obviously, it's gonna come with a little bit of color in the water. It's gonna come with uh, you know some different approaches, but uh, there's some good fishing to be had. So that we'll talk Obviously, still waters are a good option, and uh, you know stuff around town here is a good option as well. So, uh, you know, if you want your warm water fix, now's a good time. May's a good time to uh, get get some warm water fishing in. So, let's talk fishing uh, as we did last week. We're going to start off with weather. So we're going to go weather, flows, bugs. Let's start with weather. The reason we're starting with the weather, it dictates what's gonna happen with flows, especially on free stones, and it will dictate your bug choice as well because you'll see either flow bumps or you'll see warming, with, warming water or you'll see flow bumps with colder water and that will sort of change your uh, bug choice as well. Uh, so starting with weather, looked at, we're looking at Vail and Sedalia as we normally do. Vail, uh, relatively cool today on Friday, and then it's going to bump up through the weekend. So Saturday, Sunday, and I think into Monday and Tuesday, looking at uh, temperatures into the mid to upper 60s, and then it's gonna to start to cool down and get into the lower 60s uh, as we get to the end of next week. Um, Sedalia, we're seeing a similar trend, although obviously temperatures are a little bit warmer, so it's you know, in the mid 60s, upper 60s right now, it's gonna bump all the way up into uh, the up, mid to upper 80s and then drop back down into the you know, mid to lower 70s-ish um, towards the end of next week. So when it comes to the freestones, the, obviously that temperature bump will bring more upper elevation snow melt into the system. So that's gonna bring cool, uh, you know, pulses of cold water. It's also gonna bring a lot of sediment. Uh, and then as it starts to cool down towards the end of next week, you'll probably see it either uh, taper or flatten out or start to maybe drop a little bit. Um, but you know, the temperatures and the overnight lows don't necessarily suggest that you're not gonna be still melting snow that during then. So you might just see, you know, a bump into the beginning of next week and it's gonna sort of maybe gradually rise or sort of flatten out. So if I were targeting free stones, I would probably focus towards the end of next week where you start to see a little bit of um, sort of that cooler quote unquote weather. So keep that in mind. Um, with the, with Sedalia, you know, using that as a sort of indicator for, you know, the Decker's Cheeseman area, the you know, temperature, up elevated temperatures certainly might dictate that they bring more, you know, send more water down from uh, upstream reservoirs because they might need to, you know, make some room. Uh, but it also could just mean they keep that water at the same sort of level that it is now. And you're just gonna see some increasing water temperatures, which will make the caddis more prolific and, you know, blueing olives and, to an even greater degree, midge is less important in the in your rig. So keep that in mind uh, when you're choosing where to fish. Obviously, I'm making sure that you're keeping in accordance with all the local regulations. So there's the weather. Let's talk about the flows. We're going to start with tailwaters along the South Platte, Decker's 361 
11 mile 58.7 Dreamstream 70.3. So as I mentioned last week, this is something that I remember seeing last year where you had a big sort of bump uh, you know, below Cheeseman and then flows were relatively low, uh, especially seasonally for 11 mile in the Dreamstream. That sort of means you're gonna choose a couple different bugs, uh, especially maybe you know use smaller tippet, use smaller flies when it comes to 11 mile Dreamstream. Maybe have more of an expectation for dry fly fishing there uh, if the wind sort of doesn't pick up, and using some more junk when you're looking at deckers. So you know, those flows have been holding pretty steady. Haven't seen much change um, over the last two weeks. You know, obviously saw some, you know, saw a bump on deckers, I believe, but um, you know, and I actually think it, it did. They did drop it and then raise it back up earlier this week. So. But fish uh, should be adjusted to those flows, uh, so that shouldn't be a huge deal. So that's the tailwaters. Getting to the freestones, uh, you're looking at Eagle at 955, Colorado Kremlin at 2160, Arkansas Slide at 929. All of those, I believe, are above average uh, for this time of year, and all of them are sort of steadily rising. Um, I'll double check the Salida flow, to see if that was rising at all but um, I know that you're seeing a sort of steady rise on the Colorado. Yep, steady rise on the Arkansas as well. So steady rise, nothing huge. You're not seeing massive jumps, but you're seeing a steady rise as is normal for this time of year. So keep that in mind. So you have some rising flows, maybe not the best for dry fly fishing. You're gonna have some color in the water, uh, but certainly uh, there is some fishable water to be had, uh, especially the higher you go in any of those uh, systems. So keep that in mind. Obviously, flows don't really apply to still waters, but uh, still waters are open in fishing. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Antero, Spinney, if you wanna go to North Park, and knock yourself out. So just make sure you're doing it responsibly. That is flows, let's get to bugs. Let's talk about bugs and we're gonna start with freestone bugs. Generally, you know, when you see elevated flows, a little bit more color in the water, um, you know, the water temperature is probably gonna be a little bit lower, especially if flows are bumping and you're getting all that snow melt. Going big and keeping, going big, going dark, having a good profile and keeping those flies uh, close to the bank in the slow water, as as you know, as close to the bank as possible is generally going to be a good uh, approach. Um, you know, salmon flies are on the horizon, so throwing big stone flies, bitch creeks, uh, Pat's rubber legs, wired stone flies. Um, you know, take your choose your favorite stone fly nymph, big heavy things, and those will definitely uh, put fish in that. It's also worm season. San Juan's, uh, Cannon's Worm, that's a, I like that in the big water. Um, the Heavy Metal Worm, I believe that's the Heavy Metal Worm, I think that's a gulas pattern. It's things that get, get down, have a big profile, are a lot of calories and make it worthwhile for a fish to eat. You can also throw caddis, you can also certainly throw um, blue wings, but when in doubt, throw bigger and you know a stout tippet two, three, four X, uh, will generally get the job done. For caddis, um, hare's ears, dirty birds, uh, you know, caddis larva, all good go-to flies this time of year. And you can throw some bigger blueing olives if you'd like to throw smaller bugs, but generally I'd be throwing some bigger stuff. This is also one of my favorite times, especially on the Colorado, uh, you know, that middle Colorado section to fish streamers. Uh, I'd usually throw a sinking line, maybe like a sink three or sink five, sink six, and sort of swing that into the soft water, then bring it up the bank. And I like throwing black and flashy, as I've probably mentioned a million times. It's generally my go-to with most any time of the, of the year, but certainly uh, puts fish in the net this time of year. So, you know, black, flashy, heavy flies are going to uh, be a good option this time of year. Um, I'd probably beat the drum for the Creelex, the Peanut Envy, uh, you know, 
there's good reason. I have confidence in them. I think confidence is a huge part about stream fishing. And yeah, throw, throw what you're confident in. Throw, if you fish it like you mean it, then you'll catch them. Is that something? I don't know. Maybe. All right, so tailwater bugs with flows, deckers being 360-ish, and you know, seeing some lower flows up on 11 Mile and Dreamstream. If you're doing Cheeseman or Deckers, uh, certainly leeches, you know, Myers Mini Leech, Pine Squirrel Leeches, um, Hellraiser Leech, good lead fly, also throwing eggs, throwing worms, uh, similar patterns to the ones I mentioned before. I'll definitely put fish in the net. Crane flies, those are gonna be sort of bumping along. Uh, you know, those, those are good lead patterns to throw. Um, I would also consider throwing, you know, some stone flies. I would generally keep them a little smaller than you would on some of the free stones, uh, but similar flies to the ones I mentioned. Uh, especially up on the upper stretch of the South Platte with the lower flows, caddis are certainly going to play a big role. Uh, you know, standard caddis larva, um, you know, splat rollers, those, you know, sort of greenish larva flies will always produce this time of year. Um, and then blueing olives and midges, certainly good flies to have uh, in, the, in, your, in your fly box this time of year as well. Um, and similar to the ones that we've talked about, um, don't wanna, you don't need to rewrite the book too much this time of year when it comes to your blueing olives selection uh, subsurface. So RS2s, um, Juju Betis, uh, shot class betas, you know, the standards. Uh, bars are merger, obviously. And midges, your favorite midge. I, you know, at this point, I don't think the, I don't think you need to be too specific with the midges. Um, if they are obviously keying in on the super small stuff, you know, be aware of it. One thing I will say, so obviously, lower flows generally mean good, uh, good dry fly fishing, but this time of year, with the flows like they are at 350, 360 on the South Platte through deck, Treesman and Deckers, um, I actually like it quite a bit. You know, with the water temperature getting warmer, I like it quite a bit for dry fly fishing. You get a lot of those really soft insides uh, where fish will just sort of stack up, um, especially early and late. Uh, if you don't have cloud cover, we'll get fish in those soft insides and they'll just sort of be king and they won't necessarily be rising like, a lot, they won't be showing themselves a ton, but you'll see these sort of, they'll, they'll be shark and like, just swoop and swoop. And if you throw a dry fly at some of those fish, um, you know, I was up there last, this past week, and sort of getting that one last trip, I know I said I wasn't going fishing, and then I did go fishing. Uh, but throwing sparkle duns, um, and, you know, trailing like an emerge like a mole fly behind it, or you know throwing like a high vis parachute betas, um, and fish were keying in on the dry flies, which was really cool. So uh, keep that in mind. Obviously, if you see caddis spitter sputtering about, um, scurrying, sputtering, flying, dancing, doing any of that stuff, you know ex caddis, uh, Goddard caddis. Elk here caddis, all good options. Twitch them, strip them. Uh, I also mentioned there, you know, saw quite a bit of uh, of hoppers up there, but and I'm sure if you really dedicated your day to getting hopper, you certainly would. But I think the water temperatures where they are, fish aren't necessarily keyed into them uh, like they will be later in the summer, uh, where they'll be holding a little bit different, more consistently. Um, so certainly can throw maybe a dry dropper if you'd like, but um, I wouldn't depend on it to produce a ton of fish. But if you want to get a hopper, you never know, it might be worth it. So, all right, appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, we'll be back in another two weeks. Uh, again, we are open back in Denver. Certainly appreciate you guys um, you know, supporting us through uh, this very odd time and you know, looking forward to continue to help you guys get out on the water and uh, enjoy some good fishing here on the front range and beyond. So um, 
yeah, that's it. We'll see you in the next one. I'm sorry that I welched on that. I'm sorry. Okay, bye.